Hi guys and welcome to this next video in the Simplify OpenTX series. This is the first real video on our Logical Switches sub-series if you like. So what I'm going to do is open up OpenTX Companion and we'll get straight into it. If you're not sure about um, Logical Switches then what I'd suggest is having a quick look at the introduction video which I'll link to up in the top right hand corner and have a quick look at that one first and then jump back into this. So what we're gonna do in this uh, episode is look at these A interacting with X switches. So what is A and what is X? Right, so A is a switch of some sort or a feature on the radio itself. So if you look on here, we have channels, we have trainer ports, we have the physical switches, we have max, which means always on, we have the sliders, we have uh, the inputs. F things that are features on the radio are labeled as, as a, a. And what is X? X is simply a value that interacts with that. So if you select certain things, you may see different types of values. Oh yeah, so there you go. So if you choose a timer, you get a time. So if we have a look at the A equals X switch, I've actually, the example I've come up with is exactly what I've got here, so that's handy. So what A equals X means is when A here is equal to the value here. So in this example, if we want to find out when a timer is at one minute, when a equals x if we set this to one minute when the timer gets to one minute that will activate the logical switch it will switch it on so that that is how the a equals x switch works it's really at this level is really quite simple whatever's in here has to equal that so when that gets to one minute it will switch on when it gets to one minute and one second it will switch off so what i've done is i've just changed the timer from one minute to 10 seconds and what we'll do is we'll go to setup and we'll set up our, our, a timer so timer one we set it so that when sf is down it's it goes so if we go to simulate we have our timer, it's counting up. So when that gets to 10, we should see that flash on and then it will flash off when it goes over to 11 seconds. On, off. So that's that's an example of our equals logical switch working. So on to the next one. What we can look at next is the approximate. So what this the squiggly line means is when a is approximately equal to x so what that means is plus or minus just under one so plus or minus 0 0.9 so for example if we wanted to set our throttle so we get an alert when it's near the middle we could put this on the throttle channel set that to zero because zero throttle um, or zero is middle because don't forget it's minus 100 to 100 so when it's near enough in the middle it will activate this so we're looking for logical switch one up here so if I move for that close to the middle it will activate and you can see it's it's within one percent and it goes minus 1% it's still active, zero is still active. So it's, it's approximately center. So that's, that's how that works. Next, we're going to look at these two. Um, what these mean is A is greater than X or A is less than X. So what we'll do is we'll set this up on the throttle. So that if it's greater than 90%, then it will activate the switch which doesn't seem like something you may want to do yet, but I'll bring something else into this shortly. So if we set this to, actually it's gonna be 80, because it's 
20 is 10% because it's minus 100 to plus 100. So this will be above 90% throttle. So we can simulate that to check. So our throttle is down, that is up. So we bring it above and it activates the switch. You can see it's, it does say 84, but if, if I center it, you can see it's zero. So it goes negative 100%. We, we now have our switch working when the throttle's above 90%, it activates. So what, my, why <clears throat> may we want this in the real world? If we've got a, a motor and a ESC that are at limits and you're really pushing it, it will say, don't draw this many amps for any more than 10 seconds. So what we can do is I'll show you this column now, which it, there's duration and there's delay. So what we're going to do is set a 10 second delay. So what that will do is it will let this go above a 90% uh, for 10 seconds before triggering the switch. And what we can do is set, let the switch then, you know, do an alarm as a special function to say, hang on, we've been at, you know, above 90% throttle for over 10 seconds, reduce your throttle to cool your ESC down. So, yeah, save burning it out. So if I stick that full throttle, you'll see it won't activate for 10 seconds. So I probably should have done it five, but there we go. So let's give it a little bit of time. There we go, 10 seconds has passed. It's now activated that switch. And if we reduce it again, it will deactivate. So I'll stick it back up from 20 seconds on the timer. So when that gets to 30 seconds, that should that should activate again. So there we go. So you've seen that working. So that, that's an example of a little alarm for your throttle if you're really pushing the ESC. Um, so the less than is the opposite. So it will say if now, if a throttle is less than 90% for 10 seconds, it will activate the switch. But we can put the delay back to zero. So you can see it's active now. If I go above, it will, it will activate the, the switch. Or sorry, deactivate. If I go below, it will activate. So those are just the opposite way rounds of doing things. So the next two we're going to look at is A in the lines, less than and greater than X. Now, these two here aren't the same as these here. What we're looking at is an approx, well, not an approximate value, but um, a value that doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So the, the way it's got this written isn't really clear because what we're looking here is a, is a range of values for A um, that need to be greater than or less than in this case, or not greater than or not less than in this case. So to show you that, what we'll do is we'll set it up on the left slider. For example, say we've got a pan and tilt and we want to find out if it's roughly in the center. So if I add a mix here, and we'll set that to LS for the left slider. And then if we say we want it within five in the center. So at the moment we can see it's on 18%. So it's outside of our five. If we bring this down, as soon as we get inside the five range, it deactivates the switch. So it's not greater than five and it's not less than minus five. So it goes to both sides. So if we go, go down, you see once we cross over to minus six, it activates the switch. So that it knows when that switch is deactivated that we're in a ballpark center area for our pan and tilt in, in this example. If we want it the opposite way around so that it's active within that range, we switch it around to this one here. So now, outside it will be deactivated as soon as we get in between minus five to plus five it will act activate this switch so that is a, again we could use that on the throttle to get a, an approximate mid position if you wanted to but that that is those two there are basically checking whether you're inside or outside of a range and the, the greater than and less than symbols don't really 
it's it's not really a good thing when you know that these are less than and greater than you look at this you think it's the same it's really not it's this is it is not within this range and this is it is within this range and like i say so that that is minus five to plus five if i set that to 20 it would be minus 20 to plus 20. so that that is those switch switches right there so what we're going to have a look at now is the and switch and duration so what we can do here is we can set up actually we'll keep using our examples here so we'll set up on our sf switch and we'll see if that's in a position so we'll do a is greater than x this is a two-way switch so we could do is greater than zero so we won't we'll do greater than 50. so if we simulate that switch one was active when that's in that position but not in that position so that that's a basic thing we we discussed earlier on in the video it's just a simple less or greater than switch but what we're going to do now is look at an and switch here and what this means is this needs to be true as well as this and this will be all physical switches trims logical switches anything that can give you a yes no or a true false response it will we'll put in here so in this example a lot of people use sf as their arming switches but some people like to have a pre-arm as well so what we can have here is we could put sb is in the middle position so that needs to be true and that needs to be true to activate this logical switch so what you can see is sb is in the middle here so that works as soon as we move sb out the way it doesn't work so that's a really simple pre-arm switch effectively so that that is what the and switch does so we'll get rid of that and now what we can also look at is the uh, duration and what this means is how long this will stay active for so for this example we're going to have it to activate some leds on our craft some leds particularly strobes say only activate these for sort of 20 seconds otherwise they'll burn out particularly the cheaper ones from banggood so what we'll do is we'll set up our momentary switch so when we click that it's active and when it's not it it's disabled and what we'll do is we'll set a duration for say 15 seconds so what we can then do is set a special function which again i'll go into special functions later on so when logical switch one is active we can output to our led channel 100 so that will turn our leds on for that, those 15 seconds so if i now go into the simulation um channel six is doing nothing it's what it should be is actually we should do the opposite so when it's not on we're at minus 100 so if we simulate this now channel six our leds are off if we flick the momentary switch it turns the leds on and in 15 seconds time it will switch them off again so i need to keep babbling for another about three or four seconds and then we'll see this switch off which is the logical switch here there we go so that's how the duration works so what we have now as a conclusion we understand the equals the approximately equals the greater than the less than but not within range the within range and we understand what the and duration and delay does so what we'll be doing in the next video is we'll look at the and or and xor which are more traditional um, logic switches so if you come from a circuits background or a computer background you probably already know what these do but we'll explain those in the next video
So until then, thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful, please like um, and subscribe. If you want to leave a thumbs down, that's absolutely fine. All I ask is you put a, uh, a comment below just to say why you didn't like it and what I can do to improve things. And if you want to see the next video in the series and or any of the other videos that I produce on uh, you know, flight controllers, that sort of stuff, please tick the bell icon and you'll be notified when the new video comes out. Thank you very much, guys, and fly them like you've stolen. Cheers, bye.